Well, hello, folks out there in YouTube land. Got a big show lined up for you. Let's get right on into it. All right, folks, South Carolina schedule. We're going to do a prediction, and we're going to ask the question, will Shane survive this season? This is going to be a very interesting video. You sure about that? Now, I will tell you, if you've seen South Carolina's schedule, it is a tale of two types of teams. They've got four pretty darn easy games that should be no problem at all. The other eight are a nightmare. I'm telling you, of the eight big-time games they've got, you don't want any part of it. Now, it's not as tough as Florida's uh, schedule. That schedule's absolutely insane. But South Carolina's is probably the second or third toughest in the SEC, which means it's the second or third toughest in the country. It's rough. But we're going to get into it and try to put together a good prediction and uh, come up with a uh, record. All right, they start out with Old Dominion. Okay, easy peasy at williams Bryce Stadium. Should be no problem there. All right, then they've got to go to Kentucky. If this was at home, I would feel like South Carolina could win this game. But they're going up to uh, Kroger Field. Kentucky's got a brand-new quarterback, the five-star that was at Georgia. South Carolina's got Lenora Sellers. This will be only his second game starting. I just I don't like where he's at yet. I think he needs more time to mature. Very talented, intelligent young man, uh, six foot three, 250, can run like the wind. He's going to be a good quarterback long-term, I think. But he's going to struggle at first like every brand-new quarterback does, and especially one that's not as refined as he probably should be to start in the SEC. So because of that, I'm going to go with Kentucky on this, and you'll be one and one. Okay, then you've got another tough game in LSU Tigers coming into Columbia. And that game's at noon, which sucks for you. That is a brutal time to play this game, and it really hurts the home field advantage because your people – who like to have a little fun and get all fired up for the game are not going to be able to do that at noon. It's just not going to be the same. You picked up some bootleg liquor. Where did you get the liquor? Where did you get the liquor? So because of that, that gives the edge to LSU, and they've got a very good quarterback, and they got more talent, and I think they win this ball game. So now you're one and two. Then you get the Akron Zips. Now, obviously, you're going to win this ball game. That shouldn't be any problem. Watch out for your knees and your ankles. The Akron Zips are low-hitting son of a guns. They will try to take out your knees and ankles. We played them uh, two years ago when we had Hendon Hooker and Cedric Tillman, and they wound up taking out Cedric Tillman. They tried multiple times to take out Hendon, hitting at his knees every chance they got. So watch your knees. Tell all your players these guys will go low, and I mean that too. All right, then you get a week off. You're two and two. Then you've got Old Miss coming in. This is going to be tough on Shane. Lane is going to scheme up some real crap for you to deal with, and you're not going to be able to stop him uh, scoring his points. And the other problem is they've gotten much better on defense. This is probably a game you're not going to win, and that's unfortunate because you need a win somewhere in here. And you're not going to get it from Old Miss, so now you're two and three. And now you've got to go to Alabama and uh, – They'll have gotten their uh, offense squared away in Alabama by then with uh, Kalen DeBoer and uh, Jalen Milrow, and who knows, by then they may have even gone to another quarterback. But you're not going to beat them at Bryant-Denny Stadium. There's almost no way. I don't give a piss about nothing but the Tide, baby. Don't give a piss about nothing but the Tide. So now you're two and four. So you're thinking, well, we'll probably get an easy game coming up. No, no, not so much. Now you got to go to Oklahoma. Good grief. Look at this three games in a row. And it doesn't stop there. You got another one coming up after that. Oh, no. 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 So you're probably going to lose this ball game at Oklahoma. I'll be very surprised if you win that. So now you're, crap, you're two and five. At two and five, people are going to start uh, – not measuring the drapes, they're going to start removing the drapes over there for uh, Shane's office, which is unfortunate because you owe him a lot of money. You gave him that extension after he beat two top 10 teams miraculously uh, back in 2022. So, yeah, the boo birds are going to be really loud. You get a week off, that'll help you a little bit, kind of get uh, back squared away. And then you got Texas A&M at home. 
A&M's got a very good quarterback in Connor Wagman. They're loaded with talent. They've got a very good coach now in Mike Elko. They're not going to be like they were under Jimbo. I don't see you winning that ball game either. Now you're two and six. Finally, you get a break. You get to go to Vanderbilt. This is a much needed break. Obviously, you'll beat Vanderbilt. It doesn't matter that it's on the road. They have no home field advantage there at Vanderbilt. You'll probably have half the tickets if they're still following South Carolina at that point. Your fans, I mean. So now you're going to be three and six. So ah, it's pretty bad at that point. All right. So then you got the Missouri Tigers. Chase, Brady Cook, Luther Burden. Ugh. So that'll make you uh, three and seven after Missouri. That's rough. You know, it's really hard to come back from that, obviously. All right. So you get a real break here. You get Walford Terriers. Is that that's a little dog, isn't it? Wolford. All right. So you'll be going up against the Terriers. You'll win that, obviously. So now you're four and seven. You've got the one game left. I would assume Shane will still be with you at that time. I wouldn't think you just fired your baseball coach. So you're not going to fire your football coach right away after that. That's just too much money to come up with, unless y'all have got a vault that we don't know about. So I think he'll still be coaching you when you play Clemson. He's got to win this ball game. This is your ball game at this point because you're four and seven. If you beat Clemson, everything will be okay for a little while. He'll probably save his job. Here's the problem. You got to go to Clemson. That stinks. And Clemson is always solid, you know, and I just don't look, that's Marsha Brady and you're Jan, and we all know it. Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. And uh Jan does not beat Marsha. <laughs> it's just the way that it is. Sure, Jan. So you lose that ball game and you're four and eight. At four and eight, you don't really have any choice, do you? Don't you have to let him go? Which is, you may not want to because, again, the financial ramifications that are brutal. And then who do you go get? Because you're going to have to pay a lot of, well, I guess you could try some young guy. I don't, it's tough because here's the thing. Shane Beamer's not some terrible coach. I call him the uh, smart Butch Jones, which, you know, Butch had a couple of good seasons, so... I, you're just in a you're in a sticky wicket here. You just are, and it's all Clemson's fault, 100% their fault. If they were in another state, if they were in Georgia or wherever, you'd be the big dog in South Carolina, which is you are the namesake of the state. There's plenty of talent there. There's plenty of money there, but Clemson's scooping it all up. Marsha gets all the dates, and you're sitting at home waiting on the phone to ring, and it just is what it is. And she's wrecking your life. She gets all the blue ribbons. So I don't really know what you do at this point, but you're probably going to fire him at four and eight. And this isn't me giving you grief. You, prob you probably know I'm right about this. I mean, you look at this schedule. It's brutal. Yeah, you got four easy wins. The other eight are as difficult as can be. You Maybe you beat Kentucky. The rest of them, who else you going to beat? Um, you're not going to beat Ole Miss. You're not going to beat Alabama. You're not going to beat Oklahoma there. I guess Texas A&M is a possibility. And... Um, God, you got to beat Kentucky on the road. That'd be your only two that you could, I don't know, maybe LSU. I mean, I'm trying to find you some wins here, and I'm just, I'm not seeing it, especially with a brand new quarterback who is, you know, y'all had Spencer Rattler last year and had a losing season, and that guy's in the NFL right now. And he would have been drafted much higher had he not had some crappy video when he was in high school where he was arrogant. I mean, crap. This is, this is a tough season. You know, it just is. So... We'll see how this plays out, but at least your basketball team's gotten better. So you got that going for you. So anyway, if you like this content, be sure to hit that like button. Let's continue to cover all these big sports stories. I know you don't like my uh, prediction, but it kind of is what it is. And if you hadn't subscribed, hit this little button right here. It won't cost you a dime. Helps me out and help you get my videos. And right over here is the most recent video YouTube thinks you'll enjoy based on your viewing history. And we'll see you next time on Sports Talk Jay.